Uh, thank you, Mayor Barrett. We have uh, two items on the study session agenda this evening, and the first uh, will be um, the uh, public art selection process, and our Community Services Director, John Sefton, will speak to this issue. Good evening, Mayor and Council. We get to talk art again. And we've got a two-part action tonight. Not really an action, just a two, two points of our conversation. One, to talk about the selection process, and two, to talk about the Pioneer Community Park public art piece. So in 2009, the city adopted the Arts and Cultural Master Plan, which lays out the process and sets the standards for acquiring art. It's very comparable to a number of other organizations and cities from across the nation. These public art projects are consistent with the Cultural Arts Master Plan, which recommends that the city place public art in highly visible locations throughout the community. At our at council direction, uh, back on March 5th, we had a study session on the public art. There were two main points. The council wished to see increased community involvement, and the council wished to review two or more of the finalists. So with that, staff came together to take a look at what we previously did with the selection of public art. We tended to set the parameters as part of the city council budget process. <coughs> Staff went to work to create the call to artists. Uh, we had a panel convened of other interested folks in, in the arts arena, as well as commissioners, uh, some staff, uh, folks from the neighborhoods. That recommendation was whittled down to a handful of finalists that went to the arts commission who tended to provide a, uh, a final recommendation. And council would then typically approve the project. Recognizing the input that we received back in March, we've got a new and hopefully improved uh, process of more circles, which are very artistic in design, and <clears throat> where we really want to focus on utilizing the opportunity for and recognizing the citizen engagement pieces. Uh, obviously, as part of the budget process, we have the opportunity for citizen input. New to this process will be the initial Arts Commission meeting, where again we will advertise, agendize, and focus on uh, citizen engagement, citizen feedback opportunity to become a part of the initial part of the process in what the art may come about in being. We will still do a review panel, and we will create, and I have been working on creating, an Arts Commission uh, public art website. Through this website, we'll be able to utilize the finalists, put their artwork on display, put some videos uh, with the artists actually describing where they're coming from with their art concept, and provide an opportunity for feedback from the citizenry on those, uh, on those different pieces. And again, we're really looking for different types of feedback, uh, impressions, not necessarily a vote up or a vote down on the art piece, but to get the general consensus or the general attitude towards the art proposals. We will then again agendize and make that uh, Arts Commission meeting another opportunity for citizen input. With all of the citizen input, we will bring the culmination of what was received, uh, the, the different comments, uh, the different areas of public meetings, and bring those forward to you uh, with a recommended piece from the Arts Commission, as well as at least one alternate uh, coming from the Arts Commission. Where again at the City Council it's another opportunity for a for citizen input. That initial citizen input that the City Council budget process that would just be citizen input in terms of what the funding should be overall or? Correct. It, that's not on specific art. Uh, would not necessarily be on a specific art piece. However, as we look at the way that our public art is funded through the capital improvement program, the 1%, uh, we've got a significant amount uh, established to be able to do some very unique public art pieces. The budget process does become uh, the, the potential for that initial discussion in how and what projects we put forth in, in the next year's funding. Are, are we gonna actually have a call out to citizens to come in at that point in the budget or is it just if citizens are responding to the budget? I would process? seem that those that are in tune to 
uh, the public art process or the interest in public art would make sense. We would see that as we go to the Arts Commission meetings that we would do very specific uh, radius emails, uh, radius mailings uh, to those that, uh, for example, the Pioneer Community Park, we've already got an established a group of citizens that have been involved with the park planning piece. We would get, again invite them to uh, the Public Arts Commission meeting specifically for the purpose of these programs. Okay, and so the second citizen input there would be specific projects or uh, people that have already submitted art pieces or that's more general also? Again, more general. That the very general. front end, okay. the, that this is where we would then go and after this citizen input opportunity, go and design the call to artists or design the type of art that we are interested in seeing, make that the first piece of uh, citizen contact and then work towards securing uh, the professional artist or a, or a plethora of artists. So that first Arts Commission meeting, we, there's no art to discuss, will truly be art concepts. Then the next citizen input would be kind of a a wider number of pieces they might respond to? Is that what you're thinking? That next one would actually have, uh, after going through the review panel, uh, the review panel that will be made up similar to has been done in the past, uh, will refine the ability of the artist to deliver the, the caliber and uh, quantity of the art, if you will, as well as their ability to deliver the, um, the type of, of art that the neighborhood would, that we would hope to get through the Arts Commission meeting in the previous step. So at that, that third point of citizen input would be an opportunity to really focus on a collection of different artists, different art pieces, um, or work with a specific artist to further define the art concept. And then the next one would be uh, really the, uh, the review panel would recommend one or two or whatever, uh, one with an alter at least one alternative by our new council policy. Yeah. And, and the citizens would give input to that, to those then. Again, Correct. Okay. Getting our, uh, our same thing with all, several of our other uh, commissions and boards, our goal to get uh, the public uh, to those, uh, to be engaged and to uh, have topics and items that are of interest to specific people, move those commissions around. We've been very successful over the past year and, and moving the Arts Commission, the Parks and Rec Commission as well, uh, to different areas throughout the city to, to encourage that citizen engagement. Now, might there be more than one art piece? Because uh, one may be going somewhere and another one elsewhere, and you might do that at the same time, that public meeting? Depending upon what we would for look at the for the budget, uh, process and identifying what that capacity could be, very, very, very possible that we could have more than one art selection process underway at the same time and would utilize the same format. Those would be fun meetings. <laughs> okay. yeah, I think for efficiency purposes, it might be good to bring, assuming you have more than one that you're considering, Correct. to bring them together at the same time on that fourth citizen input uh, circle. Yeah, there's other than the, the first, as far as the process, the first Arts Commission meeting, again, these are all public meetings. They're typically held that we're not adding more public meetings, so we're really trying to be efficient and effective with what we're currently using into the process. However, by reaching out, having specific content to, to invite the public to, we, we feel confident that this will give uh, the, the culmination of public feedback for, for your final and good decisions. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, so wanted to also provide a quick uh, look at the uh, potential for the website. We've been successful with reaching out to the community uh, through feedback forms on the website and getting good uh, data that can be captured as part of a, an Excel database. Um, have the opportunity to put pictures, video, et cetera. Just a real quick example of what we could look at for the proposed uh, public art pieces. And this is an example. Uh, staff continue to work on and refine the content and the methodology for the website, but there is actually a live uh, piece right now. So our goal uh, to increase citizen engagement, mailings to residents, uh, arts commissions near proposed locations, uh, utilizing uh, videos and information from the artists 
uh, opportunity for uh, citizens to provide feedback at each of those uh, community meetings as well as the website. And important to again note, this is not a vote from the community. We're not looking for thumbs up or thumbs down, but it is an opportunity for the Arts Commission and City Council to consider the feedback and make decisions. Anything Thank further? Comments? No? Okay. Oh, I guess I have a okay. question. Um, the input from those community meetings, um, how will that be carried forward? So the board is going to take the input from those community meetings and use it to deliberate? Correct. I see in the public meetings we have opportunities to direct to the website for the form to get to provide that feedback as well, do comment forms at those meetings. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we did with some of the Parks and Recreation Commission meetings. Those are opportunities to compile all of that feedback and put into a spreadsheet. It does end up being a very long document, but it is information that can be carried forward to uh, the panel members. I would see them using some of that in their uh, review and recommendation, as well as the Arts Commission meetings, or Arts Commissioners, uh, using that feedback as part of uh, their assessment of the final art pieces and then finally for your consideration as well. Okay. I, I mean, I'm considering the citizen input to be part of the deliberations for the Arts Commission. Correct. Okay, good. Thank you. Anything else? Thank okay. you. So as this is an uh, administrative process, the nod tonight will uh, we'll go that route. And then my next point Pioneer Community Park. You will recall this. Uh, we had a, a, a good discussion on uh, the Thomas Sayers uh, proposed piece. Uh, what we would propose as staff is to utilize the um, circles again. However, not going back all the way to the beginning uh, to recognize the, uh, the additional work and the, the time and the effort that was put into refine to the final four. Uh, we're proposing that we take uh, back to the Arts Commission uh, website, uh, develop that website, develop the communications portal, and then have the additional public arts commission meetings, and then bring t back to you uh, with that public feedback uh, on the four finalist uh, pieces uh, for your consideration at a later time. Okay. Objections to that? Okay. Sounds good. We're going to give it a shot. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Next item. All right. So we'll go to the next item. Sure. Our next item is the Youth Master Plan Update and Peoria Community Council on Youth. You will recall that back in November of 2012, Council adopted the Peoria Youth Master Plan. I will say it was the first in the state, and there are several other municipalities that are keeping a close eye on what we're doing to engage our youth and to plan for our youth and to provide for a great place to live and to grow up. Uh, the Community Services Department works very much hand in hand with many other city departments and external organizations to help execute the Youth Master Plan. The goals and recommendations are under continuous review uh, for potential for improvement. And those six areas, uh, we've got a strong vision, a strong mission, and six strategic goal areas. I wanted to provide a quick update on where we are under each of those areas. The education and life preparation, a couple of unique opportunities. We created a recreation leader assistant. This is an entry level position to work in our recreation and, and sports programming. Uh, for 16 to 18 year olds. Uh, there's nothing better uh, than work experience and uh, working with HR to create a position specifically uh, for youth uh, in that age range has been very successful. We hired six this past August and we're going to continue to use them uh, through the fall and into the spring next year. The library programs, we continue to partner with uh, the summer rec programs. Obviously literacy is a very important element to being successful in life and education and working with our library resources, we continue to provide excellent programming. The city, uh, the Rio Vista Recreation Center uh, continues to research programs from other communities. 
We're working on developing a strong summer recreation program that involves the older kids, the younger kids working together, again, to provide better education and life experiences. And then the AMPM Homework Club is just an opportunity with our vast amount of, of AMPM programming. Uh, we've got over 1,300 kids in the program. Having the homework time and the ability to, to network and to, to receive guidance uh, during the a after school time frame uh, pr proves to be very valuable for the youth in their education. Safety. Safety is predominantly uh, uh, coordinated by a pol uh, police chief uh, mentor and his uh, efforts in, in making uh, the, the community safe. Uh, the youth master plan elements are very, very strong and coordinated. The Chiefs Club was a new project we coordinated with him to actually work with officers on the street, find children that needed programming, and we worked with them to be sponsored through recreation programs. We've had a very successful fall, and we'll consider making this a, a significant or an ongoing program. The Peoria Police Department completed safety meetings with all of our staff. They've always worked with us, but of late, they've really ramped it up. We had six different meetings working with full-time staff as well as part-time staff. They've received excellent reviews and been very helpful in recognizing the types of safety-oriented issues that we may face in the line of duty that we have in providing recreation programs. So great awareness programming. You can, the, the ongoing uh, monthly meetings that Chief has with the Community Action Network, um, a number of those are focused on youth, and we've, we've be already begun to network a number of times with different groups that are providing youth services. And of course, uh, Chief has already spoken in previous times about the SRO programs at the different high schools and how successful those are. General fund grants, uh, an important thing to note this past year, uh, 12 youth-oriented nonprofits were funded through the general fund grants. Some of these included the Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, Theater Works. I'm sure some of you were on the subcommittee to make that, uh, those appropriations. That's just one way that uh, the, the Youth Master Plan is being met. Play Peoria continues to attract funding partnerships to provide scholarships for recreation and leisure programming. Each of these programs are under continuous evaluation for effective and efficient program delivery. And we are using the website again. We've got an opportunity to uh, have a, a real strong presence. We know that the kids are using the web, web uh, as, as more of a communication tool. Uh, the team continues to make sure that the right content is available for the teens, uh, both educationally and uh, for programs and activities. Uh, in co community collaboration, other opportunities, we worked very closely with the uh, Peoria Education Foundation in, in offering the Peoria Arts and Cultural Festival, which was very successful, another demonstration of good community collaboration. The, um, we had great support from Little League and, and Pop Warner Football uh, to support our re request for funding through the Arizona Sports and Tourism biennial, biennial grant process. And we'll talk a little bit in the near future about the Community Council for Youth. Civic engagement, getting youth involved in, in, in our civic efforts. Uh, the council liaison, Youth Advisory Board Council liaison, will go be going to the Subcommittee on Policy and Appointments on September 10th. We've had a couple of applicants that are truly phenomenal. Um, and, and that will be before you as a body first week of October with the goal of having uh, a youth member uh, supporting by mid-October. A total of 160 youth volunteered at neighborhood pride programs. The Youth Bell of Rights, is a cre have cre the Youth Advisory Board has created a survey to get feedback from students to start to develop a Youth Bill of Rights, which is one of the goals of the Youth Master Plan. Uh, last November, we had five Youth Advisory Boards members attend the National League of Cities. And on two different occasions, the Youth Advisory Board uh, got to uh, participate in the Prost update, which is all about the Parks Recreation Fund uh, that we have in Peoria. And boy, can they come up with some unique ideas on what they want to do in their free time. <laughs> and the final goal. Oh, just yeah. saying, you have a question. Can you tell me what might be in the Youth Bill of Rights? Well, it's been a while since I've been a youth, and I have not been involved in, in that process. I do have staff here that might be able to help with what the discussion has been. Uh, 
Um, basically, they're going to be very basic issues in the Youth Bill of Rights that kind of cover everything that would be in the Bill of Rights, uh, safety, um, everything in the Youth Master Plan is going to be kind of covered in the Youth Bill of Rights. We're putting the survey, the survey is put together just to kind of get a feel from the local high school students as of what they would like in the, in the Bill of Rights. But it's just going to be a very basic, um, this is what we see as youth as being important in the city. Right. And we're basically putting it together. They're going to be taking it to their schools and by themselves and putting it together. So we'll be coming forward with it soon. Okay, thanks. And the final uh, goal, major goal area is out of school enrichment. All of that time out of the school day. The teen program partners with Theater Works, offering acting comedy voice lessons, all right here at the Peoria Center for P Performing Arts. An, extant, an expanded extreme teen program, which includes a Flagstaff adventure course and the Teen Fit Challenge. And we've been uh, working on program evaluations. Uh, the program evaluation tool and, and coming up with a tool that is generally accepted across the state and perhaps across the nation as well has always been a challenge for the out-of-school programmers. I've been personally involved with the Arizona Center for After School Excellence and a statewide committee working on what the quality standards truly should be uh, between licensing and not licensing and recreation versus education. Uh, there's a lot of things to uh, really uh, debate and, and, and to end up on a very strong program evaluation tool focusing on quality and all of those other important elements including safety and in essence providing a great opportunity for children to grow up in Arizona. And of course the fire department, they're always uh, in, engaged. Uh, Tim Iden helps to teach fire safety at our summer camps and other programs. So with that, any questions on uh, where we're at with the Youth Master Plan and our progress to date? Yeah, it, it seems like there are a lot of things. <laughs> are they always going to be the same youth, or where, where are the pools of youth that you are pulling from? Are they different categories of youth? Or? There's th these these principles are very broad, and um, well, the pro yeah, a lot of programs. Yeah, the too. programs and the activities, yeah. we, and to track them all, we've got a very extensive database of uh, of different areas. And uh, Brenda Renke, recreation manager, is the tracker. Uh, she, she's making sure and, and cracking the whip across the, the, the community to make sure that we've got uh, good feedback and really appreciate the detail that she provides in helping us bring this together. You're right, that the youth uh, are always changing. Uh, they're growing up, right? And, and we recognize this even with our youth advisory board um, that uh, the demands and, and the needs for a teenager are certainly different than those for those that are younger. Uh, and it's, a, it's an interesting uh, dialogue. It's an inter interesting dilemma and something that we work on as professionals in our, in our, in our uh, different teams to, to try, try to provide that unique, safe learning experience, uh, recreation experience, uh, something that uh, really helps individuals to grow. And many times that could be as simple as uh, our community events, for example. I mean, those are opportunities for the families to come together and experience something new. Uh, family life matters, uh, community life matters, and those are the types of things that are really driving what this Youth Master Plan is about. Jane, do you want to sure. I, I did just want to mention one other item that, that comes to mind uh, that the Youth Master Plan had brought out was something that Councilmember Ames had referred to as really trying to get a good cross-section of our youth. Um, and as a result, some just great efforts that have gone through in the last year or two, uh, including uh, the work with the chief mentor in regard to our at-risk youth, in trying to reach a, a number of different throughout the, geographically throughout the community uh, and not just going to what we would see as just the normal usual suspects that we see. Um, and so just in that sense, I think what we've seen with the wide diverse program that we've started to implement since the Youth Master Plan, we really have reached a, a good cross-section of our youth. So you're going to be reaching out to different categories of youth that uh, don't normally just show up for the summer programs and so on. Okay, good. Question. That's a perfect segue to our, our next item is the Peoria Community Council on Youth. Uh, as a goal of tonight's study session, really want to get your vision uh, and, 
uh, concepts or con and consensus on what the body should look like. Uh, the Community Council for Youth is actually uh, within its recommendation number one within the community collaboration tool, recognizing that it's not just, just us as staff and, and, and council, uh, but it's a community-wide effort to make a great place for, for kids to grow up. Um, we would see this as uh, facilitated by the Community Services Department, much like we have the Library Board, we have the Parks Commission, uh, Arts Commission, and other areas. Our goal would be to inspire and enhance uh, <coughs> programs, synergize programming, highlight community strengths and challenges, and build the networking opportunities. Uh, it's similar to how Chief Minter has uh, laid the, the groundwork for creating that you can tool. Uh, we recognize that the, the network is really where the value comes from in, in having those opportunities to learn and share what's going on. And the network, uh, really, when you think about it, uh, from other government agencies, school systems, not-for-profits, youth-centric private entities, there's a number of businesses in Peoria that are providing youth-type programs. Uh, and interested citizens. We've got a number of folks out there that have dedicated their lives to making youth better, and, uh, and we can capitalize on their being a part of the network. The method, we recognize that in addition to uh, ending up with a, uh, an appointed body, uh, something formal and official, but really want to drive what that body does in developing six bi-monthly events with a focus on the youth master plan specific goals, each with educational speakers, uh, learning activities and issues and discussions, and then getting back to that network. We crafted out our, our goals and objectives would be to develop the program, uh, establish the recruitment, get the communication. Uh, we already have a process for applying for boards and commissions, whether we utilize that or, or, or perhaps something uh, separate. We took a stab at picking a few dates over the, the next year to really focus on and develop the network, develop the educational opportunities around the six goals of the Youth Master Plan. With that. Questions or comments? James? Uh, maybe it's built in here, but the one thing I don't see, and I know when I talk to youth, particularly when they become juniors and seniors, they're looking for, for jobs. The kinds of jobs teenagers used to have are harder to get these days. You know, they used to work at McDonald's and restaurants like that, and, but now they're hiring permanent employees. And where do youth, uh, youth find jobs? Is that uh, one of the things you're going to be able to address in this uh, comp uh, that is complex under of... Uh, programs? Absolutely. And under goal one, uh, really providing that, that, that life preparation, we've got a number of examples within our department where we are utilizing interns. Uh, we're providing that job experience. Uh, the youth, uh, the, the assistant, the recreation assistant one position, those are the types of jobs that we have lifeguarding. Uh, lifeguarding uh, can be hired as early as 16, in some cases 15, uh, depending upon the job assignment. And those are great skill-based jobs that we provide. A number of lifeguards go on and become firefighters and policemen and teachers. Those are jobs that we have within our, our control and our peer review, but also the ability to create those internship programs. Chris Calcaterra at the Sports Complex has a number of youth that are learning uh, agronomy uh, and, and what it takes to, to, to be engaged in the... You're uh, talking about outside Peoria jobs now for youth. Those are yeah. within, within Peoria, but, but what we provide for Peoria youth City. now, right, sure. translate to skill sets that can be utilized wherever. So, for example, as we look um, at the, the timeline and we have the objectives as we go through life preparation, certainly a, a key element of that could be uh, job development and maybe as we develop uh, the programming for that and we talk with the, the council Maybe we make sure that we look at different ways that we can look locate different types of jobs even beyond the city of Peoria itself Ms. Carla. Thanks, um, I just want to Congratulate you for putting the youth master plan into action 
I mean, really, it, it, the fear was that it was going to sit on the shelf, that it was just going to be a plan that was going to collect dust. And obviously, this is an aggressive action plan that has um, a, that is being facilitated, you know, with, with the Peoria Community Council. You're going to have people who are actively involved in it. Staff is going to be actively involved in it. You've got a, a group of projects, timeline. I mean, it's, it's really exactly what we needed the Youth Master Plan to be. So I really appreciate all the work that you've put into this. Thank, Thank you. you. Other questions or comments? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Nice job. There we go. That's all we had on the study session agenda this evening. Okay, we are adjourned until regular session at 7 p.m. <laughs>